All right, good morning, everyone. How's everyone doing? Awesome. So uh, my name's Anka Jane. It's an absolute honor to be here today at, uh, at the summit. Uh, it's been an exciting morning. I'm going to chat with, with all of you for about 10 minutes about how AI is changing business and really enabling all of us to scale ourselves. The 15 investments, some of them are platform companies that enable others to use AI, and some of them are vertically integrated companies. Uh, that are taking AI and applying them to some fields. Um, one of the things that we've done differently, uh, because Google is our LP, is that we've set up what we're calling a startup rotation program. Senior Google engineers can take a one-year technical sabbatical out of their roles at Google into the fund and work for our portfolio companies. Google so what I'm going to try to go through today is step back in history and talk about other technology revolutions that have taken place and how the media portrayed them and what ended up happening. The first of this uh, was the internet. Between 1995 and 2000, there were hundreds of articles about how this thing called the internet was pure hype. Between 2005 and 2012, there were articles talking about this thing called cloud computing and why it would never take off. But if you see what actually happened, you'd see that the internet has grown everywhere. It's affected billions of people. And I think most of us, especially in this room, can't go two seconds without getting interacted by with the internet. Cloud computing has grown much, much faster than any of us imagined. This last year and the coming years, we're spending over $100 billion on cloud computing alone. So what about AI? Well, we think we are at the very start of the impact that the AI ecosystem will have on our worlds. We're just getting started. From a venture perspective, seed capital has investment has grown 50% in the last 12 months. Series A investments have gone up over 100%. And the total capital investment in AI has grown from $2.6 billion to over $6.6 .6 billion between 2016 and 2017. And that's as we're just getting started. So now that we see that, let's, let's switch gears a little bit and talk about where there are opportunities in AI. Um, our belief is that there's going to be thousands of companies that are built on top of the breakthroughs in AI technology. Many of these will be application companies that are going to be big over the next five to eight years. This is on top of all the infrastructure that's being built by the large companies and many of the startups in, in the space today. When I think about the application ecosystem, I like to take inspiration from Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So at the very bottom of the pyramid are the physiological needs. These are food, shelter, your home, medicine, and health. There's companies today that are going and looking at all the live imagery of farms to increase crop yields. There's companies that are trying to understand radiology scans to try and understand what's actually there and give radiologists superhuman powers. There's companies that are creating smart assistants. All of us have a friend who's spoken to invisible machines in their house to turn on the lights, to control the temperature, to control music. And of course, uh, the space of drug discovery is ripe for innovation because the search space here is huge. It's something that machines can tackle much more efficiently with human help. Once we have our basic needs, safety and security comes next. This could be indoor, outdoor, or digital security. It could be analytics. And this is an area where a lot of companies in Israel are very, very strong at. And th this is why it's so important. It's so low, and it it's a basic need for most of us. Uh, safety and security also plays a big role in the world of autonomous vehicles, in the worlds where you have, in, in the legal fields, in e-discovery, where you've got oceans of data, and you're looking for that one smoking gun. Um, another field, another area, and the next layer of Maslow's hierarchy is operational efficiency. And, and you see this at, at the, the sunrise areas in this field today are retail self-checkout, supply chain optimization, pricing prediction. Now, I, I'm putting all of these up here not to just throw a bunch of buzzwords out, but really to make all, bring all of us on the same plane that AI is going to affect every single aspect of our lives. And we're just getting started. The next layer is esteem and education. 
How can we use AI to improve us at what we already do very well? We're seeing the, the, the early instance of this in, in conversational analytics, in, in customer service, on sales. There's tons of companies that are trying to, in real time, process what's being said and give hints, give advice on how to be more effective. The, the customer service agents and sales professionals are also getting coaching by, uh, by systems that can tell them the people that are successful in your organization, in your team, or in your industry, these are the things that they're doing, and this is how you can be better. And, and the last part of the last layer of Maslow's hierarchy is transcendence. It's, it's growing beyond what we're used to so far. Uh, I like to think of this as giving superpowers to humans. Traditionally, this could be seen as mentorship. Today, um, I'd like to introduce something that some of you might know about, but it's something very close to my heart, uh, a whole area of research, and now we're seeing some interesting breakthroughs called generative learning, a way of generating and creating the world. As humans, we do two major things. The first thing that we do is we understand the world, and today's AI tends to do a lot of that. There's computer vision, natural language processing and understanding, um, but what generative AI lets us do is do the second thing that humans do very well. It creates conversations. It creates art, it creates music, uh, and, and it's really giving the computers a way of supercharging us as humans. So, uh, with a little bit of this, this in mind, I'm going to do something that, that's not very common. I'm going to flip the tables. Even though I'm a venture capitalist, I'm going to pitch a couple of companies. All right? These are hypothetical, completely fake companies, but they're going to introduce generative learning in a pretty interesting way, I think. So. Um, Good morning, everyone. I'm Anki Jain. I'm the fake executive officer of a very fake company, MovieStar.ai. It enables any of you to become a star in a movie, a TV show, or a GIF. So how many of you have wanted to be on a talk show or in a movie? There's a few brave souls out here, but deep down, we all kind of want to do it. So you have to wait no more. All you have to do is go to an app store, download the moviestar.ai app, and connect it with your photo gallery, all in the privacy of your phone. It builds a model of you, and then it says, why don't you pick your favorite clip? It can be from a movie, a TV show, or from a GIF. Think about Jonah Hill and his happy emoji, his happy GIF. That could be you. And ta-da, within a couple of seconds, you can be in the movie show. Now, or the TV show. This is a real instance of something that's available. If you search for a fake app online, you will see a hundred examples, thousands of examples of this happening. This technology is already here and will enable all of us to become movie stars in today's digital age. The second company. So good morning, everyone. I'm Ankit Jain, the fake executive officer of VeryDeep.ai. VeryDeep aims to be the certificate authority of the digital generative age. It's an enterprise company. As we see more content being generated, it's important for us to understand what's authentic and what's generated, so that when it's published on the web, we know how to take it. It's OK if generated content is for entertainment or for certain cases, but it's also important to know when certain uh, content is completely generated and it's being pushed out there as uh, being something real. And so what VeryDeep.ai is going to do is going to give a certificate of authority to every piece of digital content as it is published on the web. Think of this as the VeriSign for today's generative age. So the reason I brought up both of these companies is because I want to introduce each and every one of you to the concept of generative learning and how it unlocks potentials both on the consumer side and the enterprise side. As these kind of breakthroughs happen in the world of AI, there's going to be thousands of ideas that are spurned. And what would be really exciting for all of us to be a part of is to help companies go from building products that are nice-to-haves to must-haves to must and finally to utilities. I love to see all of us support the ecosystem so that AI companies can help us make the world a smarter, a more scalable place in the same way the cloud helped us scale the online services infinitely, the way mobile phones allowed us to be connected indefinitely, and the way the internet brought us all together. Thank you.